Make sure to use code BANGLE at sign up on FanDuel for a $20 deposit bonus. And check out my second channel for other games coming up like Red Dead Redemption 2 and Call of Duty Black Ops 4. As well as my third channel with collaborations with some of your favorite YouTubers. Let's get into the video. What's going on guys? Bengal again here coming back at you with another video where today we're back on Madden 19 franchise. Where as you can tell from the title we are going to be realistically rebuilding the New England Patriots without Tom Brady. Because that I think is the realistic point to where the Patriots are. The dynasty doesn't necessarily have to be over. They still have good pieces in place. However, Tom Brady is a really big part of that team. We'll see what they can do without him. So currently hopping in to week 16, we are 9-5, and five, which is the actual record in real life as the Patriots are set to play the Bills. However, Tom Brady almost certainly will retire at the end of the season. I feel like he does every single time whenever I do one of these. He is 41 years old pretty old at this point so safe to say we're gonna have to find another option through the draft i am gonna load in my draft class you can download that if you want to i have a video on it but it is also entitled bengal 2018 draft i believe let's pull that up or did i say 2018 bengal 2019 draft obviously uh so yeah go ahead and download that if you want it's ps4 exclusive right now but it has all the players you could want so this is the team by the way you got trent brown at left tackle also adrian waddle don't really see him playing too much. Joe Tooney, David Andrews, Shaq Mason, Marcus Cannon, with Rob Gronkowski, Dwayne Allen, and then Josh Gordon we're going to have to cut because it happened in real life and they didn't update the roster yet. So we are going to cut Josh Gordon. It is what it is. got to keep this uh, realistic and he's not going to be on the team. So another team will pick him up. We should honestly just take him out of the league because he's never going to play in the NFL again, I don't think. But um, Julian Edelman, Chris Hogan, Philip Dorsett, Cordero, Patterson, Braxton, Barrios. Honestly, might as well play Cordero Patterson at running back. Because he's been taking a lot of snaps there. I don't know how good he's going to be. Probably like low 80s. How good is Cordero Patterson as a running back? I think probably a decently high overall. He's an 88 overall running back. He's been taking a lot of snaps there though. I don't feel bad about playing him at running back. Might eventually change his, uh, his number, but at running back, we have James White, Sony Michelle, Rex Burkhead. I don't know what we're going to do with Cordero Patterson yet. I'll move him back to receiver because I kind of want to develop Sony Michelle during this, and I don't know how I feel about Cordero Patterson being an 88 overall running back. With, of course, Tom Brady, Brian Hoyer, James Devlin at fullback. Defense is a lot worse. They are just not even close to the level of the offense, but you do have Devin McCourty who is getting older. We're going to have to replace him soon. He's 31. Same thing with Patrick Chung on this other side. Duran Harmon, Obi Melifon was here. They also have Duke Dawson. But none of these guys are really long-term starter caliber, in my opinion. Like, Devin McCourty and Patrick Chung are both 31. They're going to start regressing big time in just a few weeks at the Super Bowl where that takes place. But in the linebacking core, we do have Juwan Bentley, who's pretty good. Dante Hightower, Atlanta Roberts, Kyle Van Noy. Not really sure what we're going to do with that group just yet. And then a cornerback, Stefan Gilmore is good. He's having an incredible season. He's a fine age. But Jason McCourty is a twin of Devin. So they're both going to be 31. Uh, and then on the defensive line, you have Dietrich Wise with Adrian Claiborne at right end. Also Derek Rivers. Not really sure what we're going to do with him just yet. And then a defensive tackle, Lawrence Guy, Danny Shelton, Malcolm Brown, Hook'em Horns, John Simon, who is not a defensive tackle. He left end. Uh, Trey Flowers, there's John Simon. So we'll see what you do. Trey Flowers is really, really good. Super underrated player. I will use some coach XP while we have it. We're in the playoffs. I don't really know what we're going to do here. Because uh, it's not about this first season. I didn't build anything here, obviously. Uh, and this team's going to take a significant hit after Tom Brady is gone. So we lose in the wild card to the Dolphins, 31-21. Okay. All right. But it is off-season time. Trey Flowers will be a free agent, as I believe the Rams beat the Steelers. J-Mac is here. So is Steven Goskowski, Chris Hogan, Trent Brown, Danny Shelton, Ryan Allen, Philip Dorsett. There are a lot of free agents here. Do we hold on to Cordero Patterson? I don't even know what we do. I guess I'll update you guys after I've made those decisions. All right, so I'm bringing back Malcolm Brown. 
25 years old, quick development, want to bring him back. I think we can get his overall up. I'm going to let Jonathan Jones and John Simon go. I brought back Philip Dorsett. I think he has a really high ceiling. Brought back Ryan Allen. We need a punter. Brought back Danny Shelton. Again, another just good young defensive tackle. I brought back Trent Brown because he's a decent offensive tackle. And those are kind of difficult to come by. He's only 26 years old. Uh, so I did that. And then um, brought back Trey Flowers. Steven Guskowski needed those guys. I'm not bringing back Chris Hogan. He's 30 years old. Only a 78 overall. We need to get better and younger. And then I'm not bringing back Jason McCourty. Only an 81 overall, 32 years old. He's kind of dead weight at this point. And of course, when I say like these are realistic rebuilds, they are if I was running the team. So I am making realistic moves. But when I didn't re-sign Larry Fitzgerald in my Cardinals one, everybody freaked out. Like, it's realistic to a point. I'm not going to trade him for, you know, a player. But uh, I'm not going to carry dead weight when I'm trying to turn around the franchise. Le'Veon Bell's here. I have no interest with Sony Michelle and uh, I guess James White. But I don't think I want any of these cornerbacks. Like, I do like the idea of Trevor Williams. I really do. And Jason Verrett would also be cool. I just don't love the age on that. Really, Trevor Williams is the only guy that makes sense, and he's a scheme fit. The Dolphins and Redskins, per usual, are just driving up the price uh, really, really high. And I don't really feel like doing that. He's another guy that's always in free agency every single year. And I just don't feel like making the same move every single time. NFL draft time. We got to check to see if Tom Brady's still here. We pick at number 23 overall. So performing so well probably hurt us a little bit. And as you can see, the team is significantly worse. And there is no Tom Brady to be found. Very, very bad. Only three players. Excuse me, only two players at a 90 overall or above. We had some mid and high 80s in there. But overall, the team has gotten a lot worse as the Raiders go Nick Bosa, number one overall. We'll see the top five. Jets take Jonah Williams out of Alabama. Jaguars go Devin White. Cardinals take Ed Oliver. And the Bills go with Greedy Williams. Pairing up the LSU cornerbacks, Greedy Williams and Tredavious White, as we will simulate to our pick at number 23. Jerry Tillery goes to the Seahawks. A lot of these moves I like because I could see them happening. Who do we take, though? Who are the quarterbacks here? There are still some decent QBs. So I'm not going to take one right now. I'm going to kind of go best player available for our needs. And that probably would be DeAndre Baker. Thinking about DK Metcalf as well. But I like DeAndre Baker at this spot. I love his abilities. So he is the newest member of the New England Patriots. 79 overall with star development. Don't think we've ever drafted him before in one of these. So 91 speed, 83 man, 86 zone, 82 press. Decent acceleration and play recognition. He won, uh, I believe, the Thorpe Award this past year in college football. So he is a very, very talented player. And Patriots, I think, would be very happy to snag him here as we're going to simulate to our pick at the end of the second round. Ooh, good offensive lineman went to the Texans here late. Uh, Bo Benchowell. And who do we take? Still Will Greer's here. Daniel Jones. A lot of quarterbacks. I'm not sure that we have to take one just just now. Jonathan Abram could be a cool one. I know we've taken him before. But the quarterbacks are still here. I don't really feel like taking one if we can grab one in the third. Um, what do we need? Wide receiver could be a need. Taking Hollywood Brown a lot. I don't really want to go that route. No pun intended. I almost want a safety. And Jonathan Abram would be a really good one. What else could we take? I'm going to go Montez Sweat here out of Mississippi State. Welcome to the New England Patriots. He is a 77 overall with quick development. Obviously not ranked at number one in the class. I had this, this uh, genius come to my comment section the other day and accuse me of cheating. He's like, well, you just edit their ratings so they're the best player in the class when you know you're going to take them. I'm like, no, it's a graphical glitch. <laughs> they, they can't all be number one in the class. But Montez Sweat is pretty good. 78 power move, 70 finesse move, 81 speed, 85 acceleration, 85 tackle. 83 block shed, decent strength, decent awareness, and play rack. He's very decent. See if we can find a spot for him. As we have another pick here late in the second. As Bryce Love goes to the Cowboys. Paired with Ezekiel Elliott. I am going to go with a quarterback here, and that is going to be Easton Stick out of North Dakota State. The new Carson Wentz, if you will. Really liked his tape last year, and again, he's been solid. Incredible player, and welcome Easton Stick 
to the New England Patriots. First time we've taken him one of these. Again, of course, not the number one overall player, but 76 overall star development. 92 throw power is not exactly elite, but it's decent. 76 deep accuracy, 83 medium, 84 short, 77 awareness, 78 throw on the run, 88 play action. Not great throw under pressure or break sack, but speed is pretty good at 80. Decent acceleration. Overall, a very, very solid pick. Joe Jackson to the Texans. Chiefs go Kelvin Harmon, and the Bucks get Martez Ivy. Pretty good value for a lot of these guys, and a lot of the quarterbacks are still sticking around. And Jonathan Abram is still here, so I'm not going to pass up on that. Welcome to the New England Patriots, Jonathan Abram. Not sure how much we're going to play you. Probably going to be a bench guy at the start, but he was just too good of a player to pass up. 91 speed, 83 zone coverage, decent hit power at 76. Not bad. Khalil Hodge goes to the Seahawks. Here we are in the fourth round. Hollywood Brown still available. I'm doing my best not to even think about taking that because he always falls. I'm going to have to do something in my draft class to make sure that doesn't happen every time. And you know what? I think we're going to go with J.J. Arcega Whiteside here. 76 overall, normal development. First time we've taken him. He has uh, overall just really solid numbers. We'll look to play him a lot in year one. And the next pick we have is a late seventh. Ooh. Who do we even go with here? Is there any good value? Like, probably not. Ooh, O'Shane Zimenez is in the seventh. Definitely gonna have to change that. Kind of forgot to add him to the class, but here he is. He's already in. And late seventh round guy. We're definitely gonna add him a lot higher. Uh, and bump that overall. But for now, he's only a 65 overall. But a decent player. I like him in real life a lot. Really strong hands. As we have a pick uh, just next. As the Seahawks go Andre Jefferson. Really strong hands. Quick pass rush move um, to the inside. And decent to the outside. Not exactly a fantastic edge bender. But overall a solid player. And we will go with Dakota Allen. Another player I probably have to bunch up. Or upgrade I should say. Seems like a Patriots player. A guy with potential off the field issues that falls in the draft. But ends up not having any. And he's insane. Could be the story of Dakota Allen. I will probably bump him up, though. But uh, draft recap. We will check out the players we took. Just to refresh you guys in case you didn't remember. But overall, really good class. Brought in DeAndre Baker, Montez Sweat. Easton Stick will be our starting quarterback. Jonathan Abram, J.J. Arcega, Whiteside, O'Shane Zimenez, and Dakota Allen. This would be an absolutely unbelievable class in real life. If they got all these players. Highly unlikely, but fantastic for us. So obviously this team has gotten a lot worse. It was a 79 overall, but I have changed things around to boost that just a little bit uh, with position changes, I should say. Uh, nothing else. Offense is an 83 overall. No major changes besides the addition of J.J. Arcega, Whiteside, and Easton Stick. The rest remains the same. And then defensive, well, obviously we lost a lot of players. No more Josh Gordon. No more Chris Hogan. No more Tom Brady. I think he's a pretty notable one. And then on the defensive side of the ball, I have changed to a multiple 4-3 system to kind of fit some of the new players we have. Uh, and that's going to fit our defensive tackle group really, really well with Lawrence Guy and Danny Shelton also. Malcolm Brown probably going to rotate in quite often. At cornerback, Stefan Gilmore and DeAndre Baker are going to be a really, really solid pairing. And then I moved Obi Malafonwu from safety to cornerback where he does have that fit. Coming out of UConn, definitely could have played cornerback and uh, still could maybe in the NFL, but we'll have to see. Jonathan Abram might move to free safety, and this is just how the entire team's going to play out for right now. I like where we are for potential. It's not a good team right now. Obviously, we've dropped off substantially with a lot of our top players leaving for one reason or another. Tom Brady retiring really hurts. We'll see what Easton Stick can do. We are 5-2 and two at the midseason mark. Ready to play the 5-2 Cowboys on the road. Currently atop the AFC East. The Dolphins are really close, as are the Jets. The Bills are 0-8. I guess the Josh Allen uh, experiment is not really working out. But Rob Gronkowski is an impending free agent. As is Devin McCourty. Who else? Joe Tooney, Julian Edelman. Kyle Van Noy has star development. Interesting. Dwayne Allen's here. Obi Melifonwu. Landon Roberts. Interesting. I don't even know who I want to bring back. Julian Edelman is a weird one. He's 33. He is an 84 overall. Obviously, has dropped off quite a bit. He was near an 88, I think. 88, near 90, something like that. So, 
He's obviously a lot worse just after one year. Joe Tooney absolutely needs to return. Devin McCourty's down from a 90 to an 87. I don't know about that one. Gronk is absolutely getting re-signed, but we'll have to see about the rest of these guys. For now, the only players I'm going to re-sign are Joe Tooney and Rob Gronkowski. I'm going to make the decision on a lot of these other guys in the offseason. Because if Devin McCourty's like an 83 overall at 32 or 33 years old, I'm just not going to be interested. That's just where it's going to be. If Julian Edelman is at like an 80 overall around, I'm not going to be interested. Kyle Van Noy is kind of a weird one. We'll have to see where he is. Obi Malafon with Dwayne Allen. Again, we'll have to see. Season 2, we have, again, made the playoffs. 10-6 and six under the tutelage of head coach and Easton Stick. Some of his dominance. We are going to upgrade the team. I will show you guys the stats first, as I didn't at the end of Season 1. I don't think it's relevant because we didn't play any of Season 1. It was just the team and most of their stats already. So Easton Stick had a pretty good rookie season. I mean, you can't complain about any of this. 4,000 yards, 31 touchdowns, 15 interceptions. Almost a turnover per game is not good, and probably did average that if he fumbled the ball. Uh, but 15 interceptions, not fantastic, but... Not terrible, especially not for a rookie. Sony Michelle wasn't that good, and Easton Stick did fumble once. So, 16 turnovers, maybe. So, that is one per game on the nose. Receiving, Gronk led our team in catches, also at 869 yards and 7 touchdowns. Julian Edelman was fantastic, nearly 1,200 yards and 9 touchdowns. Philip Dorsett, 664 yards and 11 touchdowns. As a rookie, J.J. Arcega-Whiteside only had... 600 yards receiving and one touchdown. I like 600 yards receiving is not bad, but the one touchdown is uninspiring to say the least. Defensively, Jawan Bentley led the team in tackles with 116. Tackles for loss, he also had a bunch with 12, but a bunch of our guys had a bunch of tackles for loss. 13 for Kyle Van Noy, 13 for Lawrence Guy, 12 for Jawan Bentley, and 12 for Trey Flowers, including double digit sacks for two players Dante Hightower, a right outside linebacker, and Kyle Van Noy at Left outside linebacker, inside, or should be interceptions. Four for Devin McCourty, two for DeAndre Baker, Obi Melifonwu, and Stefan Gilmore. Good production from our cornerbacks. I like to see that. Trey Flowers forced three fumbles, and we actually did have a fair amount of recoveries. Some of the most fumbles I've ever seen forced uh, over this past season. 17th offense, and we also had the 11th defense. Not too bad overall. It looks like a playoff team. Todd Gurley wins MVP. Show me a Patriot. All right, maybe not. AFC Offensive Player of the Year is Phillip Rivers. Easton Stick at number 10. Defensive Player of the Year is Miles Jack. No Patriots. Offensive Rookie of the Year, thank you, is Easton Stick. JJ Arcega Whiteside at number 6. Defensive Rookie of the Year is Chase Hancock. Really? Really? Chase Hancock. Okay. Interesting. DeAndre Baker at number 6. And no other Patriots. This is the upgraded team. Marcus Cannon is looking kind of bad. He's down to a 75 overall. The rest of the team is in a pretty good spot. Nothing spectacular, as we are not going to jump into any of these games. DeAndre Baker up to an 83 overall is quite nice. I was hoping he'd have some more XP. But, uh, you know, overall, I can't really complain. He didn't really do anything this year. So, can't really complain much about that. We are in the wild card against the Denver Broncos. We are going to advance to the divisional. See if we can beat them. And we are not victorious. We lose 27-19, to as I have in my top left. I mean, you hate to see it. So that's our season. Again, eliminated very early. Our first playoff game. It happened again. Okay. The Redskins won the Super Bowl 28-21 over the Chargers. Devin McCourty's down to an 85. Julian Edelman's down to an 82. Kyle Van Noy has superstar development now. How do you get this? Oh, you made the Pro Bowl? Yeah, damn. I kind of have to re-sign him now, right? He's going to be cheap as well. I don't want to bring back Julian Edelman or Devin McCourty. I know that these guys are phenomenal Patriots. And I'm sure they've been good New England Patriots. Oh, it's very funny. Uh, that's There's not even a joke there. There's, there's nothing there. But um, these guys have been fantastic NFL players for the Patriots. Julian Edelman made a fantastic catch in the Super Bowl to propel that comeback and Devin McCourty has been one of the most solid safeties in the NFL over his tenure with the Patriots and he spent his entire career there but unfortunately we are gonna have to move on it's sad but 
We gotta get better and younger. That's the name of the game. So, rip. We have a lot of money to go out and get somebody in free agency. The question is, who's gonna be here? And the answer is Ezekiel Elliott. The Colts want him. The Bears want him. The Niners want him. Interesting. I... Oh, no. Do I, I don't think I can spend that kind of money on a running back when we have Sony Michelle. And also, I guess, James White. Devin McCourty is obviously here. He has some suitors. You guys know the Ravens love themselves some old safety. Shout out to Eric Weddle. Uh, we're going to go with Jonathan Abram for the time being. Is there anybody else here? I mean, our best receivers are Philip Dorsett and J.J. Arcega-Whiteside. I don't want to bring in Nelson Aguilar because he is Philip Dorsett. That's pretty much what we have there. Uh, it's just going to be on the draft. we got to go into the draft and, and get better. Taylor Decker actually makes a lot of sense, though. And I could move Trent Brown over to right tackle. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Taylor Decker is the newest New England Patriot. Another uh, Michigan player being added to the team. Obviously, Tom Brady. Big Michigan guy. And Trent Brown is going to play right tackle. Not a franchise left tackle anyway. So I have no problem doing this. He played a lot of right tackle uh, anyway with the 49ers when Joe Staley was rocking, doing his thing over on that side. I'd rather have Trent Brown get the XP anyway. And this is the squad. Need to go out in the draft and get a receiver. What else do we need? Potentially safety, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rock with what we have for right now. I mean, Devin McCourty would have been good for another season, but I'm kind of just beyond that at this point. Could go with a cornerback. Uh, Lawrence Guy, I have no real need for. He is 30 years old. What would this do? This would not be a wise decision. I'm going to move him to left end. So that means Malcolm Brown and Danny Shelton are my two defensive tackles, which is what I want. It's what I've wanted anyway. Dante Hightower, I have not noticed you regressing. You're 30 now. Has he really been in the league that long? Man, time flies. What do we do with you? You're just bad now. He's never even going to be higher than an 80. I need to go out and get an outside linebacker. Probably two. We are in a tough spot. What is the scheme fit at right outside linebacker here? Run stopper? Interesting. Yeah, we have a lot of needs in the draft. All right, NFL draft time. A lot of people ask what class I've been using for 2020. And that is, it's called like Thomas Draft 2020. I think it's actually a pretty solid class. Not amazing. There are things that I would change. But overall, it is pretty solid. So I would recommend it as Nick Coe goes to the Eagles. Jake Fromm still on the board. And what receiver do I want? Jerry Judy isn't here. All right, I'm going to take Kalee Hudson here. I think he is pretty solid. He's a player that is going to be versatile for us. So he can play right outside linebacker in this multiple 4-3. I'm going to wait on receiver. Welcome to the team, Kalik Hudson. 75 overall quick development. He's someone that I'm going to probably not start right away. But someone that, again, has that versatility. Decent enough finesse moves. Good zone coverage. Good hit power. Good speed. Obviously, really, really fast player. What do I want to do with him? I'm not sure. We're, we're going to figure it out. Riley Ridley goes next pick as we simulate to uh, near the end of the second round. Travis Etienne is here. Don't really need that. A lot of quarterbacks available. Henry Ruggs is available. That's going to be our guy. Yeah, absolutely. Henry Ruggs the third. Welcome to the team. 74 overall with star development. Receiving core is not great right now, but we're building up this offense. They're not going to be incredible right out of the draft all the time. But that development is going to help out considerably. Time for our third round pick as Felipe Franks gets drafted. Interesting. He goes to the Eagles. Not fantastic. Sutton Smith is here. He's like a typical Patriots player. I'm tempted to draft him, uh, draft him just because of that. So I am going to. Sutton Smith, welcome to the New England Patriots. 74 overall, star development. Seems familiar. Mecole Hardman is here in the fourth. I might do that. I like him a lot at Georgia. He's a super fun player to watch. Definitely not one of the best receivers in this class. But I think we're going to take him. Miko Hardman out of Georgia is the newest New England Patriots. 72 overall quick development. Probably going to be a return guy for us right out of the gate. Yeah, yeah, 92 return. Thank you for giving him a good rating. Jalen Rager's here. He is so good at TCU. He might even uh, work his way up. 
draft forwards. I'm tempted to take him. I know we've already taken two. So I probably shouldn't go with him. Is anyone else even decent here? I don't know. Backup tight end. Let's go Jared Rice. Why not? We need a backup tight end. 68 overall. Ranked number one in the class. Fantastic. That's going to be it for this draft, though. I will see you guys in the draft recap. Draft recap. Khalid Hudson was our first pick. Here we go. 75 overall with, I believe, what? Star development? Quick development. Ugh. Well, he is going to be basically right outside linebacker, backup, left outside linebacker, backup, middle linebacker, backup, uh, right end and left end backup. I'm going to have him playing as much as possible. And Sutton Smith is, kinda be, is going to be in a similar spot. Not exactly the same thing. Henry Ruggs, I'm going to have trying to play a lot. Miko Hardman, return man, probably primarily. And uh, the rest of the class is pretty irrelevant. Actually, yeah, Kalik Hudson is going to be my sub linebacker. I think that's a really good spot for him. So I have every position exactly where I want it to be. This will be the roster. Easton Sick, of course, Danny Etling. Didn't touch on him uh, in the first year, but there he is. Henry Ruggs is going to be our third slash slot receiver for the time being. He will actually be in the slot. I'm not just uh, saying that because he's in that third spot. Defensively, we're a, only a 77 overall, which is our team overall right now. But I think we're really good. Khalid Hudson is going to be back up right end. Sutton Smith is going to be back up left end. And it's the exact opposite for outside linebacker. Sutton Smith, right outside linebacker. Khalid Hudson, left outside linebacker. Khalid Hudson is also the backup middle linebacker. As Jonathan Abrams is going to start at free safety. Deron Harmon at strong safety. Uh, we also have Patrick Chung as our slot corner and we have Henry Ruggs at third at slot receiver Sonny Michelle is power and third down running back rush left end is Montez Sweat Trey Flowers is a rush defensive tackle with Kyle Van Noy at that rush right edge Khalid Hudson is the sub linebacker and Patrick Chung as I mentioned is a slot cornerback so that is going to be the team let's go ahead advance to the midseason mark for season number three four and three at the midseason mark not terrible do have a lot of XP and we do have a pretty decent team overall. We're getting better. I know only a 77 overall. The Jets are 6-1. and one. We are second in the AFC East. Bills 3-5. and five. I knew after Tom Brady and a lot of these older players got worse or left the team, there was going to be like a drop-off in terms of how good we were as a team. So this doesn't exactly shock me. But I am going to upgrade this team. Should be at least a little bit better of an overall. And we'll see where we are. James White will be a free agent at the end of the season. I'm not really too worried about resigning him. I think we're fine with Sony Michelle. He's just a backup. David Andrews needs to come back. Oh, man, what do we do with Dante Hightower? It's another one of those weird spots where he's not going to be that good. So do I really want to keep him? And the answer is uh, I don't. I really don't. The same thing with Deron Harmon and Lawrence Guy and Patrick Chung. I just don't want them. All right, I'm paying James White under $4 million per year. So I was fine to bring him back as I was fine to bring David Andrews back. The rest, I'm just not really interested in. With the way regression works, these players are not viable options for the future. They just aren't. It's sad, but it's true. We did not make the playoffs here in 2020. We finished 8-8. Eight and eight. You hate to see that. But the team is not a super good team. Easton Stick was incredible. 4,500 yards, 33 touchdowns, only 14 interceptions. Getting a lot better there. Uh, I know it's only minus, uh, what, one or two? The 15 last year, 16. I can't remember. Um, but it, it's getting better because the yards went up and the touchdowns, I believe, went up. Easton Stick is the next Tom Brady. It's just how it is. Sony Michelle, not a terrible season. I know the yards and touchdowns look pretty good, but that yards per carry is just not where I want it to be. And then uh, Henry Ruggs at eight touchdowns, 842 receiving yards. Dorsett was pretty good. J.J. Arcega, white side wasn't bad. Gronk is still a beast blocking the offensive line performed oh fairly well and then defensively Juwan Bentley led our team in tackles with 110 tackles for loss 11 for Kyle Van Noy and Trey Flowers 10 for Montez Sweat who also racked up eight and a half sacks which led the team eight for Trey Flowers as well Kalik Hudson at five Kyle Van Noy at five and a half and then interceptions three for Kalik Hudson led the team this might be defensive rookie of the year 102 tackles five for loss five sacks three interceptions three picks also for Stefan Gilmore and Deron Harmon, two for DeAndre Baker. Kalik Hudson might have won defensive rookie of the year. He also forced a fumble. 
And then any defensive touchdowns, I see at least one. We do get one. It's Deron Harmon. We had the 11th best offense in the league. And probably not that bad of a defense. 15th. That should be a playoff team, man. That's unfortunate. Jared Goff wins MVP. Ty Gurley just behind at number two. The Jets drafted Jake Fromm. Oh, my. Easton Stick at number 10 for uh, MVP just in his second year. AFC Offensive Player of the Year is Deshaun Watson. Easton Stick at number five. Defensive Player of the Year is Ryan Shazier. Offensive Rookie of the Year is Jake Fromm. Henry Ruggs the third at number two. Show me Khalid Hudson, and he won it. Defensive Rookie of the Year. Very, very good. And we didn't even start him, really. That is fantastic. We will advance to the offseason. I'll show you guys the new overalls for some of these guys that I'm not interested in bringing back, like Dante Hightower, because as you'll be able to see here in a moment, they're not going to be viable options for the future because the regression should have just hit at the Super Bowl, which means Dante Hightower is a 78, Deron Harmon, 75, Lawrence Guy, 74, Patrick Chung, 74. I just can't be re-signing mid-70s overalls that are just going to go down. It just can't happen. So, as the Packers beat the Texans 31-28 in the Super Bowl, we will advance to free agency. I did not load in the draft class. That's fine. That's all right. It's 2020. It doesn't really matter that much, as much as it does for the first two seasons. Free agency. Who's here? McCaffrey. Um, I don't need a running back, I don't think. James White's down to an 83, and I, I re-signed him, but he's a backup, so I don't really care. Demonte Casey's an interesting one. Might want to sign him. Josh Gordon's here in free agency. Now that he's 30, he's an 81 overall. I would love to have him, or I would have, but it just it just wasn't gonna work. We only have a 73 overall defense. Kalik Hudson now starts at right outside linebacker. As you can see, even and it's down a star now because uh, I don't know. He just he didn't win the, in the playoffs. I don't know, but he's regressing pretty heavy. He's a 76 overall, and the only reason I kept him is because he has superstar. I was baited. But Khalid Hudson's going to be near an 80. Jonathan Abram's going to move over to strong safety if I sign the free agent that I want to. So I need to improve. I need another outside linebacker. Could go with a cornerback. And then an offense. We still need wide receivers. All right. I did something pretty interesting in free agency, which was go out and sign a tight end. We got all four players I wanted. Evan Ingram, Demonte Casey, Zay Jones, and Kevin King. Zay Jones now becomes the best receiver on our team. He is a scheme fit, and I like that when I was going after him. So that's interesting. Don't know. I think Philip Dorsett is kind of the odd man out here at wide receiver. 28 years old. I mean, not particularly amazing. Do we save money by cutting you? Ooh, we don't. That is a... We can't. That's, that's bad for me. I think it's because I re-signed him at the start of the video, right? Yikes. That proves to be maybe a bad decision now. It's not like we're hurting for money, but Zay Jones is now receiver number one. Kevin King upgrades our cornerback group as now we have a really solid group of three, which I think is important. Demonte KZ becomes our starting free safety. I think that's a very, very big upgrade at that position. And then our starting strong safety now becomes Jonathan Abram, which is, again, a significant upgrade at the position. I think it's now a pretty competent duo with Demonte KZ and Jonathan Abram. So that makes our team a lot better. And then Evan Ingram feels like a weird one, probably. But, I mean, this is a team that does a lot of uh, two tight end sets. Also, how does Evan Ingram look at wide receiver? So he has decent speed, decent catching, not great route running, catching traffic or anything like that. He, nah, he's going he's gonna to stay where he is at tight end, at backup tight end. Maybe... He's just not going to be high overall at, at wide receiver. I didn't plan on playing him there, but it, it is an option. He's going to be probably mid-70s at best, maybe a 76 overall, although I doubt it. I'm going to say 74 overall probably. 75, yeah, we're going to move him back to tight end. It's just the best spot for him. And again, we do run a lot of two tight end sets, so in simulation, I do want Evan Ingram getting a lot of targets uh, at that backup spot. We have a lot of money, so I don't mind signing him. I think it's a pretty lethal duo. Rob Gronkowski, Evan Ingram. Also, Rob Gronkowski is now an 87 overall. He is 32 years old. Eventually, I plan on Evan Ingram taking his spot. Gronk kind of sucks now. 79 speed, 76 catching. He's really bad. Wow. Yeah, he's terrible. Interesting. 
I might even I might even do this. Might even do that. Evan Ingram starting over Gronk. All right, now we're going to be at the draft. Of course, this is not a custom draft class. This is not actually what the 2021 draft will look like. You're not going to recognize any of the names because they're all made up. We pick at number 14. We'll see what we can do as a defensive tackle. Now, uh, Taki Klein goes to the Vikings out of Michigan State. I was thinking about getting a defensive tackle, so that's kind of annoying. We'll see what else is here. He's supposed to go in the second round, but I'm not taking any chances. He's a six foot three red zone threat that's only 21 years old. Good top three skills, fantastic speed, vertical, broad jump, all incredible. Good three cone and 20 yard shuttle as well, and then great bench press for his position. So we are going to take him. Jermaine Dossey is only a 75 overall. Really? How? 91 speed with 88 acceleration, 85 catching, 77 catching traffic, 86 short route running, 74 medium, 77 deep. 81 spectacular catch, 78 release, 87 agility, 92 jumping. How is he only a 75 overall? All these core wide receiver attributes are really high. That's a weird one to me. Ooh, Jason Stokes out of the University of Houston. Really good top three skills. He's not an athlete. 497 speed. Purifoy looks decent. Denzel Newman looks decent. Denitri Sample looks pretty good. I don't really want to take another receiver, though. But I am going to. <laughs> Denitri Sample, 76 overall, normal development. And see, like, to me, he looks worse than the first receiver. 89 speed, 83 acceleration. His catching might be slightly better. 83 catching, 84 catching traffic. His spectacular catch is bad, but short route running is about the same. Medium route running is way higher. But he's got no deep route running at all. Why did I? Why would I take him? Jason Stokes is a 79 overall, by the way. But that speed was just not good to me. Ooh, Julius Biggers, defensive tackle. We're going to take him here. 74 overall, good backup. Still, we're going to stick with Malcolm Brown and Danny Shelton. This will be the last pick that I take here in the fourth round. Looks like not a lot of great value here. Like a lot of really bad players. Arsenio Hardwick is probably the best of these cornerbacks, and it'd give us a good four. And again, even though he's like fifth round here and Henry Shahi is uh, third, I think Arsenio Hardwick is the best of the bunch. We are going to take him. He's a 73 overall. Not bad, but again, that is the last pick. And uh, yeah, I'm ready for season four. This will be the team for season number four. Good offensive line still. Gronk is still going to play tight end for us. Evan Ingram going to play tight end two and fullback with Easton Stick. Manning it down at quarterback. Sony Michelle still. Zay Jones is a recent addition to the team with J.J. Arcega-Whiteside at wide receiver number three. Henry Ruggs at third at wide receiver number two. And then on the defense side of the ball, we are going to start Sutton Smith over Kyle Van Noy. Still have Juwan Bentley, Khalid Hudson. Newest addition, DeMonte Casey. Jonathan Abram going to start at strong safety. And then our cornerback group is really, really solid. Good trio, Stefan Gilmore, DeAndre Baker, and Kevin King. With the defensive line looking like Montez Sweat, Malcolm Brown, Danny Shelton, and Trey Flowers. Four and three at the midseason mark again. The AFC, uh, uh, AFC East is really up for grabs here with the Jets, Bills, and Patriots all with three losses. Dolphins at two and five. We got to get a little bit better. Team is coming along. We're just not quite there yet. We're close. Simulating now to the playoffs. We probably didn't make it. We did, actually. 10-6. and six. I'm doing another season after this regardless, just because I'm having a good time. Uh, it's been a little bit fun, actually, to rebuild this team and kind of bring them along together. Even though, of course, they did have to fall down a long ways. What are you going to do when you have a lot of good older players? That's kind of what, unfortunately, has to happen. We are going to upgrade this team, though. And then um, probably simulate through the playoffs. Henry Ruggs with five skill points. That's what star development will do for you. I almost wonder if you get upgraded to superstar at some point over the season. He is up to an 86 overall. Nope, still at star. Almost at an 87 overall. Gronk is up a little bit. It's not a bad team. It really isn't. I don't know what happened to JJ Arcega Whiteside. Where did you go? <laughs> Where is he? Is he just off the team? I don't know. Defensively, looking solid. Sutton Smith is definitely the play over Kyle Van Noy, so I'm not really worried about all that. 
Stefan Gilmore is regressing a bit, but it's a good thing DeAndre Baker is almost a 90 overall. We are in a solid position. We'll see how well we can do in the playoffs. I am going to spend some of this coach XP real quick. I think the last position group I have on defense is the linebacking core, and it is. That's going to help out a lot. All right, can we finally win in the playoffs? We do. We beat the Broncos 30-24, to as now the Browns are on our plate. Can we beat the Cleveland Browns? Yes, the Patriots get decimated. 38-14, to doesn't show, but 38-14 to in the divisional round of the playoffs. You hate to see it. Did I show the stats here? I don't think so. Let's go ahead and show the stats. Easton Stick again. This time, second in the NFL on passing yards. We had the 6th best offense and the 12th best defense. Easton Stick, 4,600 yards, almost 30 touchdowns, only 7 interceptions. Rushing, Sony Michelle got up to 4 yards per carry, 10 touchdowns, almost 1,000 yards for him. Rob Gronkowski, over 1,000 yards, 10 touchdowns. Henry Ruggs, over 1,000 yards, 9 touchdowns. Zay Jones, over 1,000 yards. Easton Stick, man. What a monster. Blocking. Uh, not too bad, I guess. Defensively, Juwan Bentley led our team in tackles again. Tackles for loss would be 11 for Malcolm Brown, 10 for both Montez Sweat and Trey Flowers. And then quarterback sacks, Trey Flowers led our team with eight. And then interceptions, three for DeAndre Baker led the team. We only had three combined for the entire rest of the team. Only two forced fumbles, and I doubt any defensive touchdowns when you're not forcing turnovers like that. You're probably not going to have any defensive touchdowns. Le'Veon Bell wins MVP with the Cowboys. That's why the Cowboys didn't want Ezekiel Elliott. Easton Stick at number 8. AFC Office Player of the Year is Deshaun Watson. Easton Stick at number 4. Defense Player of the Year is Ryan Shazier. Juwan Bentley at number 6. Offensive Rookie of the Year is A.J. Byam. And uh, no Patriots. Defensive Rookie of the Year is Shaquem Cargyle. And no Patriots. Texans beat the Falcons in the Super Bowl. But here we are. Nick Foles was on this team. It's the CPU signed him. Stefan Gilmore, Sony Michelle, Juwan Bentley. Isaiah Wynn. Oh, no. I forgot about him. I didn't see him on the team. I would have started him the entire time. Oh, how did I forget about him? The first round pick out of Georgia. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah, well, I mean, you hate to see that. I'm going to still re-sign him. I'll probably start him over Trent Brown, honestly. So I brought back Isaiah Wynn, Juwan Bentley, Sony Michelle, and Stefan Gilmore. I mean, what does Nick Foles want per year? Like six? All right, you'll be our backup QB for the next two years. Nick Foles, welcome back to New England. I mean, if you can't beat him, join him. Or if he, if he beats you, get him. It's not really a saying, but maybe we'll make it one. All right, what do we need first before we go into free agency? Not an offensive lineman. We're fine there. I wish I had remembered Isaiah Wynn. I don't know how I forgot. I didn't see him or something. Trent Brown, like, I can get rid of you now. Is there anyone that's going to want you? I mean, probably not. And I'd be okay with signing or trading him away. It cap hit it. I don't know. We're just going to start as a win over him, probably. We still could use a wide receiver if there are any beasts out in free agency. And then defensively, I could use a linebacker, a defensive tackle, a safety, maybe a defensive end. You could say linebacker, but I like Juwan Bentley. I might just transition to a base 4-3 or something. Von Miller's here. That's very tempting, as is Leighton Vander Esch. That's very tempting, as is J.J. Watt. I can tell you about how tempting these guys are all day for this team signing-wise, uh, but Christian Kirk probably going to make an addition to the team. I mean, teams aren't going after J.J. Watt that badly, so that means I am. All right, show me... Every free agent, J.J. Watt and Christian Kirk. That's beautiful. We now have a bona fide receiver number one. And then on defense, I know J.J. Watt would be an incredible upgrade on our defensive line at either edge spot, left or right on the end. But he's going to play inside a defensive tackle. He has the frame for it. He's 6'5", 288. That's just a very big defensive tackle. A little bit on the lighter side, but not really. There are plenty of defensive tackles who are really good that are 290. Aaron Donald is a firm example. How much does he weigh exactly? Wikipedia lists him at 284. I wonder what Madden has him at in the game. Oh, he's probably going to be listed at right end. So he's 6'1", 280. So, uh, yeah. I mean, 
I know it's technically he plays defensive end in a 3-4. Well, we're in a 4-3, so J.J. Watt at defensive tackle makes a ton of sense. I don't think I have to explain that to anybody. And that makes our team, I think, a lot better. I thought about getting Leighton Vander Esch, but I opted for Watt instead. I think it's a little bit more realistic given the situation. J.J. Watt, at the end of his career, wants to win a Super Bowl. And he it was honestly fairly cheap. It's like 11 mil per year. And then our linebacking core is not that strong. What do we want? To, I, I want to transition. Let, let's see what Khalid Hudson can do. You can be a base 4-3 outside linebacker. Very easily. Block shed's low, but he could do it. Juwan Bentley, if we had a good inside linebacker, I think it, we'd be in a better spot. But, uh, yeah, I'm not going to sign Leighton Van Der Esch. All right, NFL Draft. What position do I need? Potentially, the only guy I take is an inside linebacker, probably. I'm trying to think as a defensive tackle goes to the Jacksonville Jaguars. 77 overall, Miles Gilbert out of Arizona. Looks like a very good running back here. 4'6 speed doesn't really entice me that much. Is there a good middle linebacker here? I mean, not really. Trey Jerry looks all right in the fourth. We definitely don't have to take him now. Dude, like Sherman Campbell looks so good. But like we have such depth at wide receiver that that just wouldn't really make any sense. What I'm going to do instead is take a backup defensive end. This is Rayshon Montgomery. This is a 3-4 end if I've ever seen one. Basically a defensive tackle. He's a 76 overall with normal development. We took him right about at his value. And uh, yeah, he's a defensive tackle, basically. He's a defensive tackle. Let's go with a uh, special teaming defensive back here. Fisher Asiodu out of Colorado State. 73 overall. Again, that's going to be a special teamer for us. You know, maybe a gunner. Maybe on the uh, kickoff team. Who knows? And in the third round, I will take that middle linebacker. Trey Jerry out of Penn State. Linebacker U, 73 overall normal development. Again, at this point, we're just drafting for backups, which means I am going to end the draft. So this will be the team for the fifth and final season here in 2021. I mean, it's a good team. Offensive line is solid. I am going to start Isaiah Wynn. I know he's a little bit worse than Trent Brown, but I like him more. Evan Ingram is not the starting tight end. Gronk is going to back him up. Wide receiver core is nice. Christian Kirk, Henry Ruggs the third, Zay Jones, and Philip Dorsett. I still don't know what happened to J.J. Arcega Whiteside. I guess his contract ran out and I didn't re-sign him or something. I have no idea, but he's not here. And then Easton Stick, of course. The next Tom Brady. He's been incredible. Got Sony Michelle, who hasn't really developed that quickly. And then the defensive line is in a solid spot. The only position group that could be better, I think, significantly is the linebacking core. That shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. Secondary, I think, is pretty solid overall. DeAndre Baker has been a beast. It's really been Easton Stick and DeAndre Baker um, that have been our best players. Klee Hudson's kind of cool, but in the absence of Tom Brady, those two players have been really awesome to watch. So we'll see what this team can do for the fifth and final season. I will see you guys at the midseason mark. Let's make the playoffs, man. <laughs> I think it's very doable. Four and three at the midseason mark. Currently just barely atop the AFC East, but it's still anybody's division to take. Bills are 3-4-1, Dolphins 3-4, Jets 3-5. They are all negative, below 500 if you will, but they're very, very close to the top of the division. So uh, we definitely can't back down now. We're going to upgrade this team. Easton 6 is going to go up to an 86 overall. And uh, yeah, we're finally starting to get a lot of skill points. So happy about that. So here we are in the playoffs. We secured a first round bye. We only went 10 and 6, but I guess that was the well, you know, one of the best records in the AFC as Easton Stick again continues his legacy of being a beast. About 4,200 passing yards, 30 touchdowns, only 9 interceptions, rushing. Sony Michelle still can't get 1,000 yards. So close, 10 touchdowns for him as well. Evan Ingram led our team in catches. I mean, Gronk also 16 for 162 and a touchdown, not too bad. Nobody with double-digit TDs, but Henry Ruggs had a great season, as did Christian Kirk. Zay Jones was really solid as well. We had a really good group of three wide receivers, so that was fantastic. Juwan Bentley again led our team in tackles. These might be Defensive Player of the Year numbers with 135 tackles, 13 for loss. JJ had 17 tackles for loss, 13 for Juwan Bentley, 13 for Trey Flowers, and Montez Sweat, 8 for Rayshon Montgomery, who we drafted, I believe, in the second round. Montez Sweat, 12 sacks. JJ Watt, 11.5 from the inside. 
interceptions, we have three from Kevin King and DeAndre Baker. DeAndre Baker continues his great uh, career with us. Khalid Hudson forced the only fumble on this team. He also recovered it and returned it for one yard. And uh, one yard, I should say. Any defensive touchdowns doesn't look like it. 17th best offense in the NFL. Hopefully a top defense, I imagine. Yeah, the fourth defense in the NFL. Awards. MVP goes to Le'Veon Bell. No Patriots in there. AFC Offensive Player of the Year is Deshaun Watson. Easton Stick at number six. Defensive Player of the Year is Miles Garrett. Juwan Bentley at number seven. Offensive Rookie of the Year is Trey Keithley. No Patriots. And then Defensive Rookie of the Year is Lester Paul. Rayshon Montgomery at number three. So this is the upgraded team. It looks really, really solid. I wish I had Isaiah win starting at right tackle the entire time, but, you know, I make mistakes sometimes. I'm, I'm human. Easton six up to an 88 overall. The team looks really, really good. Defensively, we are also solid. Sutton Smith up to an 80. Juwan Bentley, 81. Khalid Hudson, 82. Jonathan Abrams up to an 80. Cornerback group is solid. DeAndre Baker up to a 92. And then the defensive line is sick. Montez Sweat, 85. J.J. Watt, 96. Malcolm Brown, 79. And then Trey Flowers, 91 overall. Who do we have in the divisional? That is the question. We're going to be facing the 9-7 and seven Houston Texans. J.J. Watt goes back to play the Houston Texans. We are going to play host. And it will pop in to play the moments and jump in if we need to. We got a super close game here in the fourth quarter. The Texans are going to jump on top 28-24 with four minutes to play. And I think we're going to hop in for a play or two with Easton Stick. See what we can do. Oh my god, he's wearing number 12. That's incredible. He really is the next Tom Brady. Lob pass, sideline. Ah, Evan Ingram couldn't hold on. That is uh, unfortunate on third down. I thought that was going to be... Uh, First down for sure. We're going to we're gonna take the field goal. Field goal is good. 28-27. Still with the Texans on top. Need a defensive stop. And we got it. Three and a half minutes to take the lead. This is easy. This is easy. Famous last words. Is that safety going to blitz? He might. We're going to throw inside then. That's going to be Christian Kirk. Easy first down. Wide open on the sideline. That's Zay Jones. And that... Is a two-minute warning. Easton Sick having a pretty good game so far. About 350 yards passing. What do you have? Two touchdowns only? But, I mean, that's not that bad. I I already know, like, there's so many pissed-off Patriots fans that Zay, uh, not Zay Jones, <laughs> that uh, Easton Stick is wearing number 12. But you know what? Eat your heart out, Tom Brady. Look at the celebration. <laughs> Eat your heart out, Tom Brady. Easton Stick is the new you. In fact, maybe he's even better. Let's get Sony Michelle a touch. And that is good defense by the Texans. So they call their second timeout. We're setting up for a field goal. I don't care how I win, as long as I do. Dude, that is a blitz off that left side. Uh, well, from that strong safety. Right side of your screen. We'll take it. I'm not trying to fumble. Not really trying to bust one off. Just trying to stay fairly central as that is the final timeout for the Houston Texans. And I think I'm probably going to run the ball again. Or throw it short. One of the two. Actually, we're going to run the ball. I don't want to take a sack and get out of field goal range. That'd be really bad. And we're going to line this thing up. Steven Goskowski should be able to drill it. It's a 50-yarder, but we have the wind. I'm definitely going to be able to nail this. I know I'm like one of the worst field goal kickers on YouTube, for sure. And you're like, that's not even, it's not even hard to kick field goals. And you're right, it isn't. But it is what it is. I'm not good at it. I am, however, a fantastic punter, as you guys know. That's less of a skill that people really look for. Field goals are slightly more important, but I think I'm going to be able to bang this. Oh, they blocked it. I mean, I, I don't know. I got it perfect. I, I don't know how it was blocked. I really don't. I have I have no answers. All right, I need a streak to burn, or I need to get out of bounds within seven seconds. We're going to roll out. We're going to throw that ball because it's open. Zay Jones down, and <laughs> we're going to lose here in season five. 
What do, you, what do you want me to do? I got screwed over by RNG and they blocked a random field goal. The game hates me, and I, I hate the game. I really do. I like the trading. I like I like free agency. I like drafting players. I like the team building aspect. But of course, I, I put together a perfect drive, set up the field goal, and they block it. And that's a uh, really fitting end to the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.